Hi everyone, my name is Liz Hammonds, a Director of Education for the American Quilter Society, and I am so excited to be bringing you another episode of Quilting Stars. Today, it is my huge pleasure to be coming from Quilt City, USA to talk with Susan Cleveland. Susan, <laughs> I am so excited to be talking with you, and you know, it's been a crazy time, and to be able to talk with my friends is just making my day. So how are you? I'm okay, and it is so good to see you, you too. I'm I'm so glad that we're making little baby steps back to normal. Um, it it has been tough. It has been real tough, but uh, brighter days are ahead. I'm looking forward to that. Trying to keep my eye on that. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Bright, brighter days are ahead. I know that for all of you at home, you know, life has been strange um, to say the very least, but we are so happy to be able to come to you um, in a distant, safe way here online where you can still, you know, see your favorite teachers, connect with AQS and get inspired for whatever you're working on at home or maybe something that you started back in March thinking you were going to be really productive. <laughs> if you're like me and then just kind of put away and then maybe watch tv for a while that's okay it's time to, you know to bring it back out learn some new tips and get excited about making quilts again and that's what we're here to help you do so uh, now susan you had a wild time just recently you just moved like across the country is that right well not across the country but we're doing this living in two places sort of thing and and it, it it's, it's it's been absolutely wild Moving homes is not for the weak. It, <laughs> holy cow. Um, so my stuff is everywhere. And uh, I did find some quilts to share with you today. I did find um, a place where I could set up and do this. So it, it's good. Awesome. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> but my brain's a little mushy these days. I, a lot of people are going through that though, right? I, listen, I have to be honest, I certainly am. You, you know, it's really easy when you get so many different things going on to be like, oh, where did I put my keys and what day is it? <laughs> so, so I totally get it. Well, and I want to thank you for being here. And I uh, want to go ahead and, and say, we're not going to make you show us around your house because I know you're in all kinds of states, you know, of, of unpacking and everything. But tell us about the quilt that's behind you. Oh my gosh, this is, this is my absolute favorite quilt. Um, it was a winner a um, few years ago, let's see, 2015, 2016, something around there. And it was a first place winner in Paducah. It's my favorite. It's a perfect example of a, a mix of handwork and machine work. And I think a lot of quilters think that you need to go one way or the other. And with this one, uh, making the top was all machine. It's all machine pieced and there's some tricky piecing in there in those feathered stars where either they reach in and they touch one another. It couldn't be pieced like a regular feathered star. So that's machine piecing. The applique on this quilt is turned edge applique. And I do that with a little zigzag with a, a very skinny thread called Invisifil. And then for the quilting, that's where I mixed up the hand and machine. So I ditch quilted by machine with that skinny Invisifil thread. And then around the appliques, I outlined the appliques by machine with a heavy thread, a 12 weight cotton called spaghetti, that it almost gave a drop shadow um, to those appliques. And then in the background, and background quilting has always been my nemesis. That's been the hardest thing for me since day one. So in the background quilting, I switched to hand quilting. Um, and I hand quilted those those big daisies in the background. And then there are little looks like watermelon seeds in among the daisies. And those are lazy daisy stitches. But I love mixing hand and machine. And, and I like to point it out because it sometimes surprises people. And I use a, a variety of weights of threads to you know, make some things invisible, make some things pop more, and and that seems to be of interest to, to people. So uh, that's why I like to point that out. But she's my favorite, flowered and feathered frenzy. Oh well, Susan, it's a beautiful quilt. I love the pops of color and the different quilting throughout, and the tiny, tiny little points that you've got on on there. How do you get your points so you know perfect? Oh my gosh, I I I think I'm a piecer. 
more than anything else. And precision piecing is near and dear to my heart. And, and so that's one thing I really focus on. A lot of times I'm asked if my feathered stars are um, foundation pieced and they are not. Uh, because with foundation piecing, and I think a lot of people don't think about this, but with foundation piecing, your seam allowance is always going toward the newest piece. Well, on the legs of those feathered stars with all those triangles, I want to determine which way those seam allowances are going and I want them in a particular direction. And so that's why I, I just use precision piecing um, techniques. I invented a little uh, quilter's custom seam tool and, and I wrote a Secrets of Impeccable Piecing booklet um, many years ago and, and a, lot of, a lot of people like that. And I, I use it myself, I'm not just, you know, throwing it out there for others. I use it myself to get the, that precision piecing because I love how like nonchalant. Pointing. You're so nonchalant. You're like, oh, I developed a tool and wrote a book. <laughs> like, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say, you know, um, one thing that is so special about you is that you can teach just about anything. You know, you've tried so many different techniques. I mean, you're known for piping and precision piecing, and also you can do the hand quilting and the machine quilting. And I, what would you say to folks out there who are maybe a little bit scared about trying something new, um, but are interested in getting to a new technique? What advice would you give them? Oh my gosh. Um, I think this relates closely to, I like to tell everybody, try everything. If it's even this much interest to you, give it a try. You might like it. You might learn that you don't like it. And that is still learning. Okay. <laughs> For instance, early on in quilting, let's see, I started quilting like in the mid nineties and it was right when free motion quilting was getting very popular, being totally accepted as, um, you know, you're not cheating anymore. You know, there was a day when it was considered cheating. Well, free motion quilting, machine quilting was getting very popular at the time I got into quilting. And so I took the classes and all of this stuff for free motion quilting and I tried and oh my gosh, I really stunk at it. I was really <laughs> bad, really bad. And it caused me such stress. And so I kept trying and I took classes from, from very, very skilled renowned teachers and <laughs> they were so polite they would just applaud my effort <laughs> oh. Little Susan, you're really trying i can see you're really trying <laughs> good try great effort <laughs> we've all been I'm there <laughs> it turned out to be a blessing so i want to tell newbies don't be freaking out if you try a new technique and you are not good at it if you want to be good at it keep working at it but like free motion quilting, I was like, I, I, don't, in, I don't enjoy this. I have no um, incentive to keep working at it and get better because I so do not enjoy doing it. I think it's beautiful. I love it, seeing it on other people's quilts. But it turned out it was a blessing I stunk at it because it forced me to find other ways to quilt my quilts and kind of develop a signature style, you know, like combining hand and machine quilting. You don't, you don't see that at every quilt show, you know? Um, and, and so if I had been good at free motion quilting, I would have headed down that path. And I'm not sure I would have carved out a place for myself in the quilting world. So I guess I wanna tell newbies, um, if you don't care for a certain technique or if you, you know, don't have the gumption to work at it and improve and, 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 and so on, move on to something else. There's so much out there to learn and so many different ways to do things that, you know, to keep exploring until you find what you really love. Your quilts don't have to look like anybody else's. I love that. That's excellent advice because so often, you know, we think, okay, well, it's a new thing. And if I don't just get perfect at it, then I'm a failure. And that's not it. That's not the case at all. Find what you love because if you're not loving it, it's not, you know, it's not going to shine anyway. You're going to be able to tell, right. you know, that you loved something, that you worked on it and that you invented something just for you. So that's, that's perfect. That's a, that's a great story. And I'm happy that you were bad at free motion quilting and that you had to, no, to learn something new. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, 
I can't imagine you being not great at any, whatever you try, but I know the feeling, oh you know. God. I know the feeling. That is definitely it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, and I'm so bad because if I try something and I'm not like immediately good at it, I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> So, so and you don't I, have I get to. it. Yeah. And you don't have to, you know, move on to something else. Find what you enjoy. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I want to ask you, so what are you working on now that you're enjoying? Uh, anything, any projects that you're working on now? Yes. But uh, this little project is aging quickly. Um, you know, I read all these things about people these last six months making these quilts and getting into their UFOs and just going like crazy. And I'm like, I don't know where the time went. I've still been working and working, but not getting to do any of the fun part of my work. Yeah. Just yeah. the yucky part of my work, you know, the bookkeeping and pounding out the contracts and all that stuff. But this little thing has been in the works for a very long time. And let's see, I think it's pinned up enough that I can hold it up to show you. Oh yeah. This is this is a little project from my most recent book and my most recent book it came out last fall it's called dynamic dresdens and see it's just a little piece but you see how it's quite different from a traditional dresden um, in a number so. of ways um the first of all i i use my prairie pointer tool it's fabulous for making prairie points but i use it for making points on my dresdens another thing is i do a sew and flip technique on a foundation to create these rings of Dresdens and then that way they come out more accurate. And then I think you'll notice that I did some machine quilting on this background and now I am all set to place my Dresdens on there and ditch quilt them onto the quilted quilt. Very, I love that. Very different. You know, you're oh not having to quilt around them or on top of them. You're just adding it after the fact. Yes. And, and background quilting is way easier when you don't have obstacles. Oh my gosh. To yeah. bump into, you know, and you can do that any, any technique you like. I just did straight line quilting kind of, I wanted it subtle. I wanted it, you know, to be functional, you know, structural quilting, but without, you know, drawing too much attention. Because after I ditch these in place, then I'm going to use hand quilting and I'm going to hand quilt swoops like that around there. And then I'm going to put felted fault well wool balls oh, at the cool. ends of each of those swoops. Cause see, I've got felted wool balls on my little prairie points there. Those are so cute. I love the and balls so that I, you I want to repeat that. And then while I was playing around with that one, I had the idea, um, you know, I could place those Dresden rings another way. So here's one where they're interlocked. Oh, that's so neat. You and don't see, see this one doesn't doesn't have the binding on it yet. There's just the piping is out there. But but see, I, you know, I can place them. The quilt is quilted. I can place those little puppies wherever I want to. Absolutely. Because if you were trying to do that before quilting a quilt, it would be a nightmare. It would be something I would certainly oh, yeah, yeah. not want to try. Quilting the quilt, you would have those obstacles. And I have a problem with obstacles because um, I I like... And this, I think, is why I'm, I stink so bad at free motion. <laughs> I think of my quilts being built in layers. And so I don't think of my quilting as filling spaces, but rather as a layer underneath my applique or piecing or whatever, which means I'm going to bump into elements, and that means a start and a stop. And I like to tie off all my threads on the back side. And so starts and stops really slow me down. So the idea that I can quilt a background, you know, and then I don't have, have those obstacles done. for all the starts and stops. And then I can ditch those Dresdens on the quilted background. Oh, I'm all for that. Oh. I love that. And, and there's another proof that you don't have to do it the way it was always done. You know, you can do it in a way that works for you. Right. And then that's wonderful. And sometimes there are reasons <laughs> why things have been done a certain sure, way. Sure. You know, sometimes I try something and I go, well, that was that was not good. Oh, I just wanted to pause for one second and just oh, tell yeah. everyone that um, your book, Dynamic Dresdens, um, is available on shopaqs.com. Oh, it is. And oh, so, so all the, know, these things just, that you're going to see. I just happen to have a copy. Oh, perfect. You just happen to have one. Like. 
Oh, it looks awesome. It's my favorite cover of all the books I've done. This is my favorite cover. I love it. It looks beautiful. And, and I want to tell everyone out there that um, if you're not an AQS member, now is the perfect time to join because we are running a special um, where you can join AQS for $20 for a year. And when you join, Susan, you're not going to believe this. You're going to get a $20 Shop AQS gift certificate and a oh my free gosh. gift. So it's like, it's totally paying for itself. We want you to be part of the AQS family. And so then you'll get all kinds of, you know, unique member only content, discounts on shopaqs.com. And you can get yes. Susan's book for 20% off. So yes. you, you need to do it. And that's Go a to a deal. AmericanQuilter.com and, and take care of it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So show us, so show us your other pieces. I was gonna show you this, this is, my Dresden technique, but done in more traditional fabrics. Here, I will pan this by the camera here. Ooh, I but love it. It's one very thing I want to point out here is look at the edge. So I quilted the quilt. I put the binding on the edge of the quilt, and then I ditched these Dresdens on, and where they hit the edge, I just wrapped them right to the back. That is and so I call, cool. I call this finish of Dresdens over the edge. <laughs> I love that. That is so unique. That's another, and that's thing another that totally you to do different it. thing. You know, I could have put them on and then put the binding on and have them trapped under the binding. But instead, it's kind of like an infinity pool, you know, how the water just droop, goes right over the edge. <laughs> right over. And in your book, um, do, you, do you tell people about that in the book and how they can try, yeah. try that at home? Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, uh, I don't hold back any secrets. Oh, I go good. ahead and I, I throw it all in and I self-publish my books. So um, I can put anything in there I want. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm so excited to see those quilts. And, you know, when we had um, we had you at Daytona Beach, the, the one show we got to have in 2020. I um, mean, it Loved was such it. a treat to have you there. Um, we had an exhibit of your quilt, which I got to take people through. And that was so much fun to see all of them there and all the different mm -hmm, techniques mm -hmm. that you use. And I, I remember, I'll never forget um, when you were t telling people about your uh, the points in your Dresdens, the, the, the points tool that you used, and you would pop that point out, of, yes. <laughs> out, of, out, and the whole crowd goes, oh, you know, they're so excited to see it. So, so where can people get your, get your tools? Um, the Prairie Pointer tool, and I've got some Dresden rulers and so on and like that, um, at piecesbewithyou.com is my website. They can also go to their local quilt shop. If the local quilt shop doesn't have it, the local shop can can get it from their distributors. So, you know, you can support your local quilt shop that way, but I always have it available on my website. So, so there you go. Perfect. You, you can too find can it somewhere. You can pop out perfect <laughs> points. Yeah. Well, it's been so much fun to talk to you. Do you have anything else uh, that you would want to show us? I have, let's see, it's kind of big for how we've got the camera set up, but, but if, if people want to see an oldie but goodie, this is a, um, a quilt that was, uh, it placed back in AQS some time ago. I love this quilt. Well, we, fe we did a feature on it in our magazine once. Oh, Remember I think that? this may have been a cover. Oh, yeah, it might have been, Was it yes. a cover? I think it was a cover. Uh, my favorite part of it is the edge. Um, I love different edge treatments, but this one has a bunch of uh, Mariner's compasses on it, and these goofy ribbons in the background, and all of that stuff is a pretty wild, pretty wild one. But it's an it's an oldie but a goodie, and, and it's just really different. Um, and that one, that one was all machine actually. Um, so, you know, well, it's so there bright are a whole and beautiful. Bunch of different ways to make a quilt work. There sure are, so, you know, I, I love that all of your quilts reflect your personality, like they're just so happy and, <laughs> and full of life and full of joy and that just, it's, it makes me so happy and it's so much fun to talk to you every time we get to talk. I am so glad that things are rolling at AQS again. It is really, really good to talk with you and I'm glad that things are starting to get back out into Revving the up. Work. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm excited. And I hope all of you at home are working on your quilts and getting inspired. Be sure to check um, AmericanQuilter.com. Uh, you, can, you can subscribe to the On Point newsletter so that you can get some free patterns and more um, really exciting things that are gonna inspire you in your work. And I also wanna say um, one more time, you know, thanks again for everything. Thank you for letting us talk with you. Everybody check out um, that book, Dynamic Direct 
Dresdens. And if you liked this video, be sure to click like on Facebook and share with your friends so they can see it too. Um, and we want to transport everyone to Quilt City USA as we talk with our friends. Um, Susan, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay Thanks. well, and I will be I praying that we get to see each other in person soon. I hope so. That would be fabulous. <laughs> Thank you oh. so much, Liz. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.